Hello, I'm Darm again. Today's question asks if I would discuss emotional abuse. In this video, I'm going to outline what emotional abuse is. I'm going to look at some common examples of emotional abuse. I'm also going to look at some of the long-term effects that emotional abuse can have on someone. So if you find this video interesting, if you like it, please consider subscribing to my channel. Just to remind you though, this video is for information purposes only. So, emotional abuse is an aspect of coercive control. Now, coercive being a pattern of behavior that is manipulative, degrading, and threatening. It is a behavior that is aimed at belittling and disempowering others. And like most forms of abuse, it rarely happens in isolation. It's normally just one of many tactics that an abusive person will use in order to dominate and control others. It involves non-physical behaviours that belittle and insult the other person. Now, these could be looks of disapproval, disappointment, being ignored, sarcasm, insults, right up to verbal attacks. They're all aimed at grinding the other person down emotionally until they feel ashamed, degraded and inferior. Now, narcissistic people often look for things that they can use against other people, things that bother them. If they were to try something and it didn't work, their chances are they're not going to do that again. But if they do find something that works, something they know makes their target uncomfortable, then they will mention it, talk about it, bring it up, do it. They will keep on pushing those buttons over and over again and ignore any pleas to stop. The aim is often to grind the other person down until they just accept it as normal. And although someone could be emotionally abused by anyone, it could be a friend, it could be a partner, it could be family members, work colleagues even. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to refer to partner as in like a romantic relationship. So some of the common examples of emotional abuse would include, first of all, what I would describe as unkind humour. Now, this is not to be confused with playful banter that a lot of people engage in with each other. This is more like jokes with jags, sarcasm, saying something deliberately aimed at embarrassing someone else, but it is hidden behind a joke. Now, if the partner expresses any kind of discomfort, asks them to stop, tells them they don't like it, the abuser might typically respond with something like, I was only joking, grow up, you're too sensitive, you have no sense of humour. What they're doing is playing down the impact of the insults. There could be derogatory nicknames, but said as if they're a term of endearment. Now, these nicknames are often something they know that the other person is sensitive about. They could be perhaps physical features, characteristics, or maybe their history. They may even laugh at their partner's discomfort to their reaction to being humiliated. That facade of there being no ill intent is really hiding, I think, something quite sadistic, and it is very devaluing. Secondly, there could be sharing personal information. Now, they may say things, these may be things that were said in confidence, something they know their partner is going to feel bad about but openly talk about it, discuss it, or just tell other people. And the aim is to cause public embarrassment. The victim feels disempowered, humiliated, and they can be left in this state of either enduring the public humiliation or looking like they are and saying they are unreasonable for not being okay with it. Quite often, the abuser's audience don't realize that this isn't just a conversation or just a joke. This is something deeply personal about the partner and it's not just this once this happens a lot and in many different social gatherings they are not respecting their partner's privacy which leads me on to the next one there's no respect for any kind of privacy when it comes to the partner whether it's personal or physical privacy their boundaries are just not respected they might make no secret of the fact that they have been reading the partner's private text messages or making snide remarks about their social media content. They could be banging on the bathroom door looking for something or demanding a conversation while the partner is in there. They could be perhaps giving a running commentary on something when the partner is trying to watch television or to read a book. Or suddenly develop a headache every time the partner wants to listen to some music. 
Now, if they're discussing something, some plan or some scheme, for example, maybe one of them's thinking of buying a new car. If the partner says, no, we don't need a new car or we can't afford a new car. Now, the abusive person, chances are they might just go out and buy a car anyway. When the partner confronts them, they'll just maybe shrug their shoulders and say, oh, I thought we agreed. Next, they are hypercritical and very judgmental. Now, this could be over a wide range of things. The criticism could be over physical characteristics, weight, height, uh, how they look, how they dress. It could be over their politics, their religion, their faith. Going to a social event, they may look at the other partner and just say, oh, you're wearing that. They may point out to their partner, look, he can get away with dressing like that or she looks good in that kind of outfit. And if the partner were maybe to buy them something, say perhaps a birthday present, they don't necessarily hide their disappointment or their disapproval. Maybe just hand it back. Is that all you think of me? Can you not try harder? They may even ask for the receipt and go and get something else that they would really like, something that they would prefer. But one way or another, the criticism and the judgment isn't just over a thing they don't like or they don't approve of. They will have a negative opinion of everything regarding their partner, who's often left feeling as if they're just never going to be good enough. Next, they can be very patronizing and dismissive. And this can take many forms. There could be laughing at the partner's problems, their discomfort, drawing attention to anything the partner may be struggling with. And they ask questions like, why do you bother? Are you stupid? Is there anything you're good at? However, there's no acknowledgement of the partner's successes, their strengths, their qualities, their achievements. They're either ignored or they are played down as irrelevant. They don't matter. The partner's hobbies and interests are dismissed as a waste of time. Sometimes, maybe if the partner's trying to communicate something, the abusive person is just giving them this self-assured smirk as if they're listening to a child trying to explain how magic works. They may roll their eyes, wave their hand, behave as if whatever the partner has to say is beneath them. If the partner does succeed at something, the only attention it will get is what could possibly be wrong with it or how it could have been done better. And next is what would be referred to as character assassination. Now, the abuser will use language like, you're always this, you're never that, you can do nothing right. If the partner does anything at all for themselves or for anyone else, they are accused of being selfish and thoughtless. Lastly, there are angry outbursts. Now, the anger can manifest itself in different ways. It can be physical, but in the sense that they may be throwing, smashing, breaking things, or there's yelling and screaming in order to intimidate. They start arguments over nothing. And each and every time, the abuser is claiming victimhood, smashing things, screaming and shouting about how unfairly they're being treated, how selfish the other person is. The way I phrase it is, my outrage proves how righteous and noble I am. Or there's the silent treatment, there's stonewalling, withdrawing, uh, withholding any kind of attention, ignoring the partner as if they're just not there. They are so hurt and so wounded they have no choice but to withdraw and the, until the partner apologizes. And in many cases, if you really think about it, the partner is apologizing for how they feel at how they're treated. And the way I phrase that when it comes to the abusive person is, my pain proves how innocent I am. And this kind of abuse can leave the partner feeling small, inconsequential, feel shame and guilt. And through these outbursts, the partner is led to believe that they are responsible for the abuser's moods. Now, the long-term effects of being emotionally abused can have a huge impact on someone's self-esteem, their self-worth, their self-confidence. What I mean by that is when you put the word self in front of words like that, it's not so much what I think of me. It's what I think others think of me. To be constantly viewed negatively can affect anyone's sense of self. It can affect their decision making. They're afraid to do something. They're afraid of not to do something. They fear the negative consequences. A person may hide their true thoughts, their true feelings out of fear of being belittled, being rejected. 
constantly second guess themselves and needing reassurance but fear asking for it because they fear the reaction. Sometimes some people go on to develop safety seeking and avoidant behaviours. I once heard it described like living on a minefield, afraid of taking the next step because you never knew if that was going to be an explosion or not. Now, if you're in or you have been in a relationship like this, I would invite you to think about reaching out to someone. Reach out to a mental health professional like a counsellor, a therapist, or reach out to an organisation that does support victims of domestic abuse. I'm going to put the links to some organisations in the description of this video. So that's a brief outline of emotional abuse. Now, as always, there's many things I haven't added, things I've forgotten. By all means, please feel free to use the comment box below. There are some interesting conversations start around these videos. But if you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.